beautiful souls. Welcome back to Explore and Chang. My name is Emily Chang and I am an CBICU ICU travel nurse. I make videos about traveling, nursing, self-care, self-love, and self-growth and exploring this big, beautiful world around me and within me. Today I'm going to share my experiences and advice on finding short-term housing for travel nurses. My favorite website so far that I've used to find short-term housing has been FurnishFinder.com. This is catered towards traveling medical professionals. So the people who are renting to you know that you're a reputable person. My favorite experience has so far with housing has been on my first assignment in Napa, California. And I was renting a room in a place with a husband and wife. They're both empty nesters, they're almost retired, and I was renting a room in their three bedroom house. I shared common spaces with them, so that was the kitchen, the living room, and their big beautiful backyard. It was on a half acre property. They had a gate in the front for my car, so it was very safe. I found my last place also through Furnish Finder, and it was okay, definitely not my favorite. I won't go into why it wasn't my favorite, but I'm actually on my third place right now, and I didn't find this place that I'm living in through Furnish Finder, but I took over my brother's lease because he moved back home to New York, so it just made sense for me to take over his lease. I know friends that have used Airbnb to find places, Facebook groups was a really, really big resource for me when I was looking in the Bay Area since housing is so difficult and expensive here. I will list the two groups that I use down below in the description box. But anywhere that you are living or looking for housing, there's usually these Facebook groups. You can just type in the city and then housing and usually there are Facebook groups that you can join and see listings for. I have also heard people of using Craigslist, of course, as with anything, be very careful um, on the listings that are on Craigslist and just make sure that it's a legitimate listing before you send money or anything. Just make sure you're safe. Here are my musts when I am looking for housing. A kitchen. This is essential for me. I don't care if it's my own kitchen or if it's communal, but it must have a kitchen because I meal prep for work and that's essential for me. I don't buy all my food. I like to save money and use my money towards restaurants and things that I want to do on my off days. So I like to meal prep for work. So a kitchen is super essential for me. And if they have the basics, that is great. My first apartment or my first uh, housing experience in Napa was fantastic because this woman that I stayed with literally had everything under the moon. I got super spoiled this first time around. She had a blender, she had a slow cooker, a pressure cooker. She had everything that I could ever want and it made cooking so much fun and enjoyable. But I know that isn't the norm. So just having a kitchen with the bare minimum is usually my requirement. Another must have thing for me is parking. If you guys know New York parking, it is horrible. If you live in Queens or Manhattan, it is so hard to find parking on the streets. It's something that I used to plan my whole life around and I just don't want to be stressing around parking anymore. I literally used to go out to dinner or something and not be able to go out that late because I was I had to think about when I could park and the later it gets, the harder it is to find street parking and it's just a headache that I don't want to deal with especially here in the Bay Area. I work 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. So when I come home at night, I don't want to be circling around the neighborhood and walking a couple blocks away in the middle of the night. So finding parking for me is essential. Another must have, which a lot of people will probably laugh at me for, is laundry. And I know that's a luxury amenity, but for me, I'm washing my scrubs every other week, um, if not more. So. I really need to have laundry and I don't want to be carrying my laundry to a laundromat however far away it is. That's just not a good use of my time and energy. So for me, I need to have either laundry in a basement or laundry in unit. Another thing I consider when I'm looking for housing is of course the proximity to the hospital. Commute time is really important in terms of your experience as a travel nurse. So if you're driving very far, and have to sit through a lot of traffic, that might not be the greatest experience for you. Me personally, I am living in a new place in the Bay Area and my commute has probably doubled 
when I go to work, but when I come back, it is very short. So for me, it's kind of worth it because going into the next thing, another must for me is for me to live in an environment that I feel inspired and happy and, you know, excited about. And so for me, even though my commute is far, it's worth it for me because I love the environment and the place that I'm living in and I get excited about things that I can do on my off days and places that I can visit and explore. So for me, it was important for me to find a place where I felt inspired and excited to live. I also did not want to drop a couple G's on a little box in San Francisco or a shared living room space. That was just not something I wanted to do. For me, when I come home from a long shift, I want to feel comfortable in the environment that I'm in and feel like my temporary home is my home. I want to come home to a space that's kind of it's tranquil and it's me and it feels comfortable because after a long shift the last thing you want to do is go to a place that's hostile and uncomfortable and just doesn't feel homey to you so I would definitely say that is super important when you're looking for a place to live in other than that I'm pretty easy going when I'm looking for a place to live in as long as it's clean and safe I'm good to go if I can't physically go to the place that I'm renting I will definitely definitely call the person that I'm renting from and either have a phone call or have a video call with them so that I can gauge and get an impression of who I'm renting from or who I'm going to be living with. And that's super important too in terms of your experience in your living situation. What are your must-have items on your house hunting checklist? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much for watching and let's go exploring.